Hello everyone, welcome back to the class. In the lecture today, I will make a comprehensive overview about the ring that we will learn in this class. This is the outline of the lecture today. First, I will make an introduction about the ring classification, which will be applied to identify different types of the ring, followed by a brief history about the serene technologies and instruments. Finally, I will explain some basic concepts that will be applied for the serene, especially the future lectures. In this class, we know that most of the serene tasks are conducted on Earth, especially the surface of the Earth. So, to classify the types of the serene, the shape of the Earth's surface is very critical. One most common assumption about the Earth's surface is that the Earth's surface is spherical. And based on this assumption, we can try to do the measurement, for example, measuring the distance between any two points on the Earth. The figure here shows one example about the spherical Earth surface, assuming that there is one plane crossing the center of the Earth, and both point A and B are aligned to the intersection between the plane and the Earth's surface. Actually, the interaction between the plane and Earth's surface is defined as the great circle. It's actually in a circle around the whole Earth's surface. Then the distance between point A and B is actually the length of the arc instead of the mathematical straight line from A to B, which will be the chord of A and B. And that's the way for us to use the um, spherical Earth surface for the serene. Um, based on this assumption, there is another term we have to define for the spherical Earth surface, which is uh, meridian. The meridian is defined as the interaction between the Earth's surface and the plane, which crosses the polar axis. For any points on the Earth, there will be one meridian crossing that point. And for any two points on the Earth, for example, A and B here, if they are not located on the equator, then they will ultimately converge to each other. But if they are located on the equator, then the meridians at these two points will always parallel to each other. Uh, also, there will be another classification about the uh, serene based on the Earth's surface. Uh, actually, the assumption about the Earth's surface as spheroid or ellipsoid is not quite realistic because they assume that the surface of the Earth is very smooth. But in reality, the surface of the Earth is irregular. And even the sea level at different locations of the Earth are different. If we introduce the average sea level, which would be mean sea level, as a true figure of the Earth, then this type of the survey could be called the geoid survey. And this one is also widely applied for the survey in current days. Um, so, based on the shape of the Earth's surface, we can actually define two types of the serene. The first one is geodetic serene, which will use the true shape of the Earth, spheroid or ellipsoid, or we will use the geoid Earth surface. Uh, one popular technology about the uh, geodetic serene is GPS, which we will use the true shape of the Earth to determine the distance and the elevations at any points on the Earth. The second one is about the plane serene. In this kind of serene, we assume that the mean surface of the Earth is considered as a plane. This one is not quite realistic for a large region, but if we consider the serene in a smaller area, it's approximately right. And in this serene, we assume that a level line is mathematically straight. In addition, based on the functions and technologies applied, the serene can be categorized into seven types. The first one is the photogrammetry serene. It will utilize data obtained by cameras and other sensors carried in airplanes or satellites to complete the mapping tasks. The Google satellite view is one uh, typical example. The second one is the boundary serene. This one will use appropriate tools to establish the property corners, boundaries, and areas of the land parcels. The third one is the control serene. 
And the purpose of this survey is establishing a network of the horizontal and vertical monuments that serves as a reference framework for other surveying projects. One term that we will use a lot in this class is called the benchmark. A lot of times it refers as one reference point from the uh, control survey. The first one, engineering survey, will provide the points, especially locations of the points and the elevations for civil engineering projects such as uh, constructing a building or bridge. Uh, the fifth one is a topographic survey. It will collect data and prepare a map showing the locations of natural man-made features and the elevations of the points on the ground for multiple uses. Uh, the sixth one, which is also a very important one we will learn in this class, is the raw survey. It will provide the topographic and other surveying for long, narrow projects associated with the civil engineering projects. Uh, these projects were trying to construct the highways, railways, pipelines, and the transmission lines. The last one is the hydrographic survey. It will map the shoreline and the bottom of bodies for the waters. Now let's take a look at a brief history about surveying, especially the implementations and the development of surveying in the past several thousand years. The surveying implementation can be retrieved back to 1400 BC in Egypt. At that time, the land division is very popular. Actually, the land along the Nile River was divided for taxation, but those divisions were washed away by flood every year. The Egyptian surveyors were created to relocate the land division with the rope stretchers, which will have the movement with the rope heavy knots at a unit distance. A lot of people believe that this technology was also applied to build the uh, pyramid in Egypt. Later on, around 160 BC, Greece developed the science of the geometry, and they will use this one to uh, precisely measure the uh, land divisions. Actually, they invented the first piece of the surveying equipment, the Appler. Uh, the most famous ones are Habakkuk's Stapler and Harry's Stapler, which are shown in the figures below. Uh, in addition, they also developed the standardized procedure for conducting surveying so that people can easily follow the procedure to do their right surveying about the lanes. When the time came to Rome, uh, surveying actually became a science and is widely applied to construct roads, aqueducts, and land division systems in Rome. Actually, during that time, the surveyors held great power. They can have their own schools and professional organizations. Also, many new survey instruments have been invented, such as GROMA, which is the cross instrument applied to determine the line and right angles and it is shown in the figure on the left. Uh, in the middle, you can see a uh, libella, which is in a frame with a plumb bob for leveling. Uh, the one on the right is a uh, coral base. It's also used for leveling. In Middle Ages, the land division system developed by Rome was widely implemented in Europe, and some new surveying in instruments, such as cauldron, was invented. The quadrant is applied to measure the directions and angles. It's in a square brass frame and is able to turn angles up to 90 degrees. In the new world from 18th to 19th century, the need for mapping and marking land claims caused extensive surveying demand. Uh, in 1785, the United States began extensive surveying of the public lands into one mile square section. Uh, the U.S. public land system uh, conducted the surveying for 30 states. In 1807, the United States Geological Survey was founded to establish an uh, accurate control network and mapping for the whole state. From 20th century to now, 
based on the quickly development of the technologies and the increase of population and land value, there will be a huge demand of the surveying tasks. And this one caused the development of licensure for surveyors. Uh, actually, in the early 1990s, there are some educational requirements for licensure of surveyors. And uh, those licensed professionals should be able to use the electronic distance measurement, GPS, construction machine control, and LIDAR, which will be the scanning mapping technologies. They were also involved in the uh, development of the infrastructures and the GIS system. We anticipate that there is a huge shortage of the licensed uh, surveyor for now and in the near future. So that's the brief history of the surveying, including the development of technologies and instruments. And now, we will go through some basic concepts that we will use a lot in this class, including horizontal plane and line, vertical plane, line, and angles, zenith angle, vertical distance, elevation, grade gradient. First, for horizontal plane and line, both of them are demonstrated in the figure on the right. Uh, for the horizontal plane, uh, here we consider the surface of the Earth as an asteroid. The horizontal plane is a plane which is tangent to the surface of the Earth. And then uh, the tangent point, which is just the standing point. And uh, any line uh, on the horizontal plane is the horizontal line. And now we can define the vertical plane and line. The vertical line should be defined first for us to identify the vertical plane. Actually, vertical line is a line which are perpendicular to the horizontal plane on the Earth, and it should uh, go through the standing point. Once we define the vertical line, for any plane which cross the vertical line, is defined as the vertical plane. Uh, for one vertical line, you can create an infinite number of vertical planes. And now the most critical concept is called the vertical and zenith angles. Let's consider the uh, coordinates along the horizontal plane. Assuming that both north and the east axis are aligned in one horizontal plane. And the zenith line, which we say that the zenith axis is perpendicular to the horizontal plane and is actually the vertical line. Now we define a directional line QS. Um, it starts from Q to S. And uh, uh, in this figure, we can find that the angle between the uh, line QS and the zenith line, which will be the vertical line, that is um, theta Z. This one is defined as zenith angle. While if we consider the uh, vertical angle, we should think about the projection of the direction line QS to the horizontal plane. And the projected line is set as Q and S prime. And then the angle between QS and QS prime, which we say is alpha, is defined as vertical angle. And that's the definition about the vertical and zenith angles. Now let's take a look at about one example of vertical and zenith angles. The figure on the left shows the example about one directional line, Q to S. It has a zenith angle theta Z and the vertical angle alpha. In the first question, 
if you know the zenith angle is uh, 52 degree 15 minutes, what's the vertical angle? And second, if theta z is 112 degree 30 minutes, what's the vertical angle? Now let's see the solution about these two questions. First, um, for the vertical angle, if we know that theta z is a 52 degree 15 minutes, then alpha is actually quite straightforward, it's a 90 degree minus the zenith angle, which will give you 90 degree minus 52 degree 15 minutes. That one gives you the result as 37 degree 45 minutes. The second question is a little bit tricky. Um, the zenith angle is a little bit higher than 90 degrees, which means the actual directional line Q to S is here, and the zenith angle theta Z it's 112 degree 30 minutes. Still, we will apply the same formula to get the vertical angle. It's 90 degree minus theta z. That is 90 degree minus 112 degree 30 minutes, which will give you the value as minus 22 degree. 30 minutes. So this one gives you the vertical angle as minus 12 degree 30 minutes. It is an angle down downward to the horizontal line. Uh, we should always apply the formula to find out the value um, our vertical angle from the zenith angle. Now let's see the definitions of vertical distance, which is also defined as elevation and grid gradients. Assume that there are two points along a sloping line, A and B, and uh, they are actually along the straight sloping line. And uh, we know that the elevation at a point uh, A is zero. And then we want to see the vertical distance from A to B. Uh, for that one, we first need to draw a horizontal line from A to the point below B. And start from B, we draw a vertical line which is perpendicular to the horizontal line. Then the distance from B to B prime, which is the uh, interaction between the horizontal line and vertical line. This one is called the vertical distance or we say elevation. And we also define the distance from A to B prime as the horizontal distance. Now the slope of the line from A to B is called the grid, or we define as gradient. So those are the definitions of the vertical distance and the grade. Another important concept is the units of measurement. Actually, the serene is trying to conduct some meaningful measurements. Uh, in order to make the measurements meaningful, we need to specify appropriate units. In this class, we will use both imperial and international units. Uh, for distance, one inch is 2.54 centimeters 
one feet is 30.48 centimeters. For angle and direction, it's more straightforward. One degree is 60 minutes, one minute is 60 seconds, and the one revolution is 360 degrees. So now before we dive into more topics in survey, we have to ask one question first. Why do we want to start with a measurement in survey? Uh, actually, we know that for all the assignments and lab sessions in this class, uh, we have to find out expressions of the measure quantities. Finding the appropriate expression of the measure quantity is the only way for us to deliver meaningful results to audience. Uh, an appropriate expression means that a measurement says something about the measurement itself. For example, if we want to measure the distance between Kingston City Hall and the JG building, then we need to choose the uh, horizontal distance. And uh, this measurement explains what we want to do. It's about the distance between these two locations. So that will be all about lecture today. Thank you very much for your attention and I will see you on Wednesday.